Welcome to MacroCode, and today we are going to learn about entity framework migrations. So, mostly we will be doing uh, migrations with the entity framework core. So, entity framework core migrations keep the database synchronized with the with the domain entity class and the configuration given in the DB context. So, migrations generally will create or update the database in a very easy manner. So, when we we, 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 we create our project, then we'll have to link this to our database. So we are going to use a SQL server to demonstrate this. So I've installed uh, some nuggets. So that is for Microsoft Entity Framework Core, then SQL and tools. So if you are new to how to install uh, Entity, Entity Framework Core, there is a video we have created on how to do this. You can consider watching and subscribing to our channel. So <clears throat> to link this, to link our application, so I've just created a simple application called migration sp.net core MVC. So I've created a folder called context and we have our application DB context. So this is our class that is deriving from uh, DB context, which is uh, using uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core. So then i've created another class called student so we have a student here so if we don't want this to be nullable you can just have it this way then we can also do the same for our middle name and uh, our first last name so after we have created this model another thing that we need to do is to is to actually configure configure our connection to the to the database so we have our connection string and on our connection string we have the default connection then the server name so this is the server address we have our database which is university so we have actually created a database on uh, sql so i'm using sql express edition so let me just show you so under our database we have a uh, university so under university we don't have any tables so that is it so we have uh, the university trusted connection we have set it to true active uh, result sets it is actually true so the next thing that we need to do is to add our our table here so this is <coughs> db context we'll actually create our table to to the database so we do this db set then we pass in our model student then we pass the name of our table students so that is how you do it set so after we have done that we need to register our uh, application db context so if you are using sp.net core 5.0 and below We'll, we'll be doing that under startup.cs, but for sp.net core 6.0, we'll be doing that under program.cs. So under program.cs, here is the, so we'll be registering that here. So it will be builder.services.addbcontext. So our DB context will copy the name of the DB context here. Yeah. Then, uh, so, so we will register our options here. Yeah. Options, then we will say <coughs> options dot, we are using SQL server then and sql server will say builder dot connection configuration dot get connection string then we pass our connection string here that is it so our connection string is the name of our settings our connection string here which is a default connection so we'll, we'll pass it here that is it so this is uh, closing that we need another one so that is it 
<coughs> so we have actually uh, registered our application uh, our application db context so the next thing is uh, we have also passed our model here so the next thing now is to do migrations so to do migrations we have a uh, uh, commands. So we have the add migration command, which will create migration files that store information from the entity class and the DB context. We also have the update migration command. The update migration command will update the database to the latest migration. So if the database is not present, then it will create a new database. Else the database will be updated based on the informations given on the migration. Then we have the uh, a revert uh, command that we will actually revert database to previous state. Then we have uh, re remove migration, with, which will actually remove the latest migration if it's not applied to the database. We have the drop database. You can actually use it to drop the database. Then you can also generate the script. Uh, uh, there is a command for that. So. Let's add the migration. So <clears throat> to add a migration, you come to tools at the top of the screen, then uh, SQL manager, not uh, SQL manager under the Nugget package manager, then package uh, manager console. Then uh, we'll just do that. Then under package manager console, We'll use a command called add migration. Add migration. Then you specify the application DB, the context. So we'll just type in the context. That we will type in. Let's start with the add migration, then provide the name of the migration. Initial migration. Then the context is application db context so you can leave it as uh, without the context but if you have multiple contexts connecting to different databases then you 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 you, you should actually uh, specify so after that we can hit enter so we have typed a wrong command name so it is actually add so let me just clear this it is actually add uh, migration. I missed something here. Add migration. So if you press enter, it will start building. It has succeeded. Then it will generate a SQL statement. So you can see it will create a folder called migrations. And under, under migration, we have a migration name called initial migration. So under initial migration, you will see we have an SQL statement that will create a table called students with an ID, first name, uh, middle name, and the last name. You can see if it is it allow nullable, it is false. Then uh, we have the primary key. The primary key will be the ID. Remember our model, we specified the key, which is the ID. So... <clears throat> To understand, to understand these three uh, files, we have the initial uh, migration.cs. So it is the main migration file which includes the migration operation. So the migration operation we have the up and down. You can see down here. So uh, method. So the up and down methods are actually part of our initial migration. So the up method is responsible for creating DB objects, while the down method is responsible for removing them. You can see it is actually dropping if it exists. Then we have the designer. So I think you don't have the, just be, if you click it, we will have a designer. So the designer is the migration metadata file which contains some db related information so you can see it has the migration id it has some uh, the models so the columns that is it then you have the model snapshot so we can see we have a application db context model snapshot 
So this is actually a snapshot of the current model that is used to determine what has changed when creating the next migration. So it, 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 it acts as like a tracker. So since we have created our initial migration, so the next thing that we need to do is to apply this migration to our database. So to apply, you just use a command called update database. Then you press enter. So everything goes well. Yeah, you can see we have an error. It is saying a connection was successfully established with the server, but an error occurred during the login process. So SSL provider error, the certificate chain was issued by an authorized uh, authority that is not trusted. So we need to update something to our uh, app settings. So we need to add something to our SQL connection. So on our connection string app settings.json, we need to add something called the trust server certificate. Trust server certificate, then this should be true. Then it will resolve this error. So if we try again, update database, then our command will be that is fine. So you can see our command has uh, completed successfully. So these are the you're able to see the commands that is being applied to the database uh, up to here. So it is done. So we have done the migrations now, which is uh, we have updated our database. So if we come to our database and refresh the database, we can be able to find two tables. One is the EF migration history. So this will track all the migrations that you do. So you can see we have uh, we have the initial migration, which is the name of the migrations that we gave the our migration. Then we have our students table. It has actually created our students table. So the approach that we have used uh, migrations in SQL in EF EF core has two approaches. One is called the DB. Uh, migrations approach and the other one is called the the code first so we have to the code first and the database uh, first migration approach so we have the DB the, 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 the code first so we have actually used the code first migration approach so the code first migration approach uh, the difference between these two is that um, for the code first you have the models you have the models which is the student class. So you have all these models. The only thing that you need now to create is the tables. But for the so for the code first, we use the models to generate the tables. For the other one, we have the tables. So what we use our tables to generate the models. So we have actually created our our table called students. So assuming we want to update the field, one of the fields in our in our, in our students table. So you'll just come to the models, add another field, let's say it's the address. So after you add the address, you come to uh, same command uh, console, then you just say add migration, then you do give the name address migration you can specify the context or you leave it so after that you press enter so if you press enter it will generate a new migration so if you come to our folder you'll see there is another migration file called address migration so if you click on it you'll find that it is adding only one column so if you are okay with that, then you can apply to the database. So you do update database. Then you press enter. So if, if you press enter, it will run the commands and it will update our database. So if you come to the database under the students table and, and check it, you will see there is a new column called, there is an, another column called address. So it has added this uh, column. So assuming you want to remove it, so you only come to the, so you can see on our, our ad address migration file, 
we have the add column command but under the drop so we said there are two methods under the migrations the up and the down so what is under down is it actually drops if it exists then it will create so assuming we want to drop that column we'll come to our student file and we just remove this once we remove this we'll need to add a migration add migration then we say remove address migration then we press enter it will generate another migration you will see it, add, it has added the migration file then we have the app it will drop then this it has now moved the column it is actually removing the column and to, to the down method so it has created our our drop command so what we need to do now is to update our database update database then everything is fine so if we come to our table and we see select so you'll see we don't have the 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 address command the address column so that is it so on migrations that is how you do migrations on efco uh, you can comment down below in case you have any question or suggestion uh, remember to subscribe to our channel uh, share and like for uh, more updates thank you and see you in our next session